This um, first sequence is a little bit baffling, perhaps if you've never seen it before, but perhaps you have seen it before. It's known as the Fibonacci sequence. And what is going on is if we add um, these two numbers, one and one, we get the next number, two. If we then add the, these two, one and two, we get the next number. So basically, to get the next number, you add the previous two. And so in this case, we're going to do five plus eight and the answer is going to be 13. For the second one, um, what's going on? Well, we're not adding the same amount every time, but what we are doing is we are timesing by two every time. These are basically our powers of two. Two, uh, two to the power one, two squared, two cubed, two to the four. Don't need to necessarily know that, but uh, it, that is correct anyway. So the last one will be 64 times two, which is 120. Eight. That's the next term of the sequence. Finally, write an expression for the nth term of the sequence below. Okay, this one is going down. This one is going down by a constant amount, however. So um, the, these are special sequences. This is a this is called an arithmetic sequence. Well, it's a special sequence itself, um, and we study it in a bit more detail. Arithmetic sequence. So how do we find the nth term? Well. If it's going down by uh, minus three every time, that means it's a bit like the minus three times table. And the minus three times table is minus three n, because that gives, because n is now varying. n is like a number, like the first term of the sequence is when n is one, the second term is when n is two. And so it generates minus three times one, minus three times two, minus three times three, and so on. So this gives us, um, a sequence that goes down by three every time. Our sequence is doing the same, but it doesn't start at minus three. So we know that uh, minus three n is going to be in the answer, but it's not actually the answer. And to get the answer, a really nice way of doing it is to think what happens when n is zero. So here n is one, here n is two. What would happen if n was zero? Well, I'd actually add three on to there, and I'd get 18. And so I know when n is 0, I need to have 18, and so I'm going to plus 18. Um, and you can also spot that by comparing the first uh, number in this sequence with the first number in our sequence. We're going to need to add 18 to make it work, but I think looking at the 0th one is uh, an easier way to remember. So that is our answer.